know, just very, very thin margin. We're just holding on. But the more we fall back into just abiding in God, just relying on God, the God brings us through. And um, I related it to getting on our mark, you know, that's worshiping together and getting set. Those are the, the faith practice that we have. So on your mark, get set, this week we go. We're going to talk about how we put our faith in action and, and how God sustains us. And how do we live faithful lives, even through all the surprising twists and turns? Maybe the big question is, how do we go into the world with faith and hope and love? Those are big questions we're going to wrestle with today. I invite you to stand as you're able and let's join in the call to worship. Uh, I need to tell you that we uh, we're relying on our paper bulletins today. Uh, our office manager, Ebony, has been out sick all week, and I want to give big thanks to Jan for producing this bulletin, so we have that. Uh, but no slides today, no, no, no screens. So let's join in the call to worship. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Rejoice and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Rejoice. And let's pray together. New every morning is your love, great God of light. And all day long you are working for good in the world. Stir up in us desire to serve you, to live peacefully with our neighbors, and to devote each day to your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Our first uh, song really goes along with this theme of running the race. So, uh, lead us and guide my feet. It's in the faith we sing, and we do have the words on the back of the board. <laughs>
summer of kindness. And so um, I know the kids in Sunday school have been uh, talking about this as well. And some of you adults are, t are telling me how you show God's love, how you are kind. So um, with that in mind, I'm going to move to our scripture. Now we do have a little typo in the bulletin. It's not Matthew 23. It's Math the Gospel of Matthew chapter 28 that I'm going to be reading from. So will you stand out of respect for the gospel? This is um, right after uh, G the, the disciples have seen Jesus uh, put on trial, tortured, crucified, buried, and then they're told he's resurrected. So the 11 disciples were on their way to Galilee, headed for the mountain Jesus had set for their reunion. The moment they saw him, they worshipped him. Some, though, held back, not sure about worship, about risking themselves totally. But Jesus was undeterred, and he went right ahead and gave his charge. Jesus said, God authorized and commanded me to commission you Go out and train everyone you meet, far and near, in this way of life, marking them by baptism in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then instruct them in the practice of all I have commanded you. And I'll be with you as you do this, day after day after day, right up until the end of the age. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I invite you to be seated. So I was reading that from the message version of the Bible. Um, it sounds a little bit different. Um, it's called the Great Commission, and we uh, maybe you will read it for yourselves this week. Matthew 28, verses 16 to 20. So friends, here's the good news. The resurrected, risen Jesus encounters the disciples. That's the church. Those 11 disciples, plus the women that were around, you know, and the crowds of people, that became the early church. Jesus encounters them, overcomes their doubts, and commissions them with reassurance for worldwide mission. That seems huge and daunting. And then Jesus says the best thing of all, that he is with each one forever to the end of the age. So that meeting in Galilee, when they all got together, that, uh, that attests that the women who encountered Jesus first at the empty tomb, they have carried out their commission faithfully. And so I want to tell you a little bit more about, about that, according to Matthew's Gospel. Um, it's like the, Paul Harvey's the rest of the story. Well, this is the beginning of that part of the story. So let's listen and use our sacred imagination and think about what this really would have been like. On the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to the tomb where Jesus' body was laid. They encountered an angel. The earth rocked and reeled under their feet as God's angel came down from heaven, came right up to where they were standing. He rolled back the stone from the tomb opening and then sat on it. Shafts of lightning were blazing from him. His garments shimmered snowy white. The, the guards at the tomb were too were, they, they were too scared to move. They were they felt scared to death. They were so frightened they couldn't even run away. So the, the angel spoke to the women. There is nothing to fear here. I know you're looking for Jesus, the one they nailed to the cross. He is not here. He was raised just as he said. Come look at the place where, where he was where he was laid. Now, get on your way quickly and, and tell his disciples, he is risen from the dead. He was going on ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. That's the message. So these women, they were they were deep in wonder and full of joy, and they lost no time leaving the tomb. They were running. They ran to tell the disciples. And then Jesus met them, stopped them in their tracks. Good morning, he said. And they fell to his, 
their knees, they embraced his feet and worshipped him. Jesus said, you are holding on to me for dear life. Don't be frightened like that. Go and tell my brothers that they are to go to Galilee, and I'll meet them there. So that's in the, the Message Bible, Matthew 28, verses 1 to 10. You know what, friends? Just the fact that we are told that some of the disciples of the early church had doubts helps us to know they were real people. They were not perfect. They struggled with real human issues. They, they, they struggled to wrap their minds around all this new stuff that was happening. And you know what? We are not perfect either. We struggle. We face our fears and, and we go out and we do the best that we can anyway. So as we've been watching the Olympics this summer, there are many inspiring stories of athletes. Um, I'm telling a very different story today than I had expected that I would be telling uh, because I wanted to talk about Simone Biles. And, you know, they're calling her the greatest uh, gymnast of all time. And there, was, there were so many high expectations placed on her. And if you heard any little bit of the news this week, you know that something very, very different happened. Um, now, there are all kinds of other races, and I uh, watched a lot of the swimming and some basketball and, and uh, a lot of other things. And so hopefully you did too, because those athletes are just as inspiring. Um, there were exciting victories and surprising defeats. But I wanted to talk a little bit about Simone Biles. And she has demonstrated her courage again and again. Um, I love to watch gymnastics, so I've been following her for, for years and seeing her do just amazing things that she has trained her body to be able to do. Well, her surprising decision this week to withdraw provoked a lot of reactions. And um, many people struggled to understand how somebody who had trained for years could withdraw from competition. And frankly, I struggled a little bit at the beginning as well. So I kind of dug into this story to try and understand. If you watched her vault earlier this week, and I did, I thought at the time, she just looks lost in the air. I don't know if you noticed that. Um, so I did a little research on that. Gymnasts call that having the twisties. And it's a result, it's a stress thing. It's a result of prolonged elevated cortisol, which is a stress hormone. And it disorients athletes and it causes them to lose their awareness of, of, of where they are when they're flipping through the air with potentially devastating consequences. I mean, can you imagine the headlines if um, she had continued to try to compete and then had broken her neck or her back or something or been severely injured? be a very different outcome. Instead, Simone Biles made the brave and difficult decision to withdraw while still encouraging her teammates. And wow, did they step up and perform beautifully. She was able to say that her mental health was, was such that she was not safe to compete. And her coaches and her teammates and the Olympic officials listened and respected her. Now, for those of us that follow gymnastics, you know this has not always been the, the way. History is full of stories of broken gymnasts who were pushed to compete, uh, severely injured, and then dropped. Simone Biles showed her courage by standing up to Larry Nasser, by advocating for herself and her other gymnasts, and most recently by declaring, no, I'm not well enough for this competition. Friends, I think we can choose to see this as an inspiration. Because you know, for all of us, the time will come when we will need to say, no, I'm not well enough for this. Our bodies will give out from injury or illness or age. Our minds will reach their limits and, or be altered in their capacity. Our emotions will be frayed or are full on broken down. And we won't be able to meet the expectations that other people will, will place.
place on us, or maybe our own expectations. But if we are strong in the way that Simone Biles is showing that she is strong, maybe we won't even want to do that. Maybe we'll realize that our worth isn't in our ability to produce, and the essence of who we are isn't contained in what other people expect us to be and do. We'll be able to care for ourselves by saying no. And some people will be upset about it. So, we don't owe them our performance, our, our wellness, our wholeness. Simone Biles doesn't owe us her performance of wellness or wholeness. She's allowed to say no. And when our time comes, I hope that we will have the strength to say no, too. That's actually in the Bible. Let your yeses be yes and your noes be no. God knows sometimes we need to set a boundary. God knows we are not perfect. And God knows. God made us human beings, not human doings. It's not all about what we do. God creates each one of us, gives us gifts and talents and abilities, and wants us to use those gifts and talents and abilities as best we can. So sometimes we have to set a boundary and say no. When other people are expecting us to do things, that's not what we feel God telling us to do. Over and over again, the Bible reminds us not to be afraid. We heard it in this scripture today. The angel said, do not be afraid. Um, well, think about it. It wasn't just the women that were hearing this. Remember I mentioned the Roman guards? They were right there. They were so frightened they couldn't run away. So they heard everything. Um, they heard the angel say, don't be afraid. You see, that's the difference between people of faith and, and non-believers. The women listened and believed and put their faith in action by telling people about Jesus. And the early disciples listened and believed and put their faith in action by telling more people about Jesus. And today, we can listen and believe and put our faith in action by telling people about Jesus. And, and by doing things that show love and kindness. I lost a, a friend this week, um, and maybe some of you know him as well. He's well known in the St. Charles community. His name is Jeff Strickland. And Jeff was my insurance agent, um, and I've seen all kinds of things out there on social media about uh, what a great guy he was. Um, but I've known Jeff since we were 12 years old, and he used to sit behind me in math class. So um, I have, you know, enjoyed Jeff as a friend all through junior high and high school. Uh, we kind of went our separate ways in college, and then uh, when I moved back to St. Charles, got reappointed. Um, but I didn't know all the things that Jeff did to uh, help people in this community, and I've just enjoyed hearing more and more of those stories. I tell you, friends, it is rocking me a little bit to think of somebody that I've uh, known most of my life and um, battle cancer in about four months and be gone. Uh, some of you have had that kind of experience. So it helps me to talk with other people that, that knew Jeff and to share those stories, those encounters with his love and kindness and caring. I think that Jeff was a, a, a person of faith, and just as we have talked about our faith and the training that we go through, um, worship, prayer, study, Bible reading, serving, helping others, sharing the good news, he lived that out, and it's been inspiring me this week. Um, and I know that the more we do it, the easier it gets to share our faith. So let me, let me end by giving you this, this uh, message of power. Because Christ followers are given compassionate power, healing mercy, and life-giving words to enact God's kingdom.
So you may have an opportunity this week to show kindness and compassion to someone. You might give a word of hope or encouraging, uh, encouragement to a friend or somebody that you just encounter, maybe at a restaurant or in the doctor's office or just anywhere in the grocery store. Um, but we, the, the point is that we are trained and we're ready and we're able to do that. So don't be afraid. We are called by Jesus to not be afraid as we serve in his name. I want to end with um, the words that the Apostle Paul wrote to his friend Timothy near the end of his life. He said, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Friends, let those words from the second letter to Timothy inspire you to keep the faith and finish the race. Finish strong. Amen. As we uh, move into our prayer time, maybe there are people that you are mourning or missing this week. Maybe there are people that you are celebrating. Um, many of you saw me wearing my mask earlier this week, and I'm definitely wearing it if I had the kiddos up here. Um, they're, they're optional. I know that if we've been vaccinated, we're able to go about without masks. But I know that the little kiddos have not been vaccinated. They're just not able to yet. And there are others for, for health reasons not been able to. So I wear my mask for the sake of others. And I know that many of you do as well. Um, we want the coronavirus pandemic to be over. And it's just not yet. So <coughs> this is a time to... to keep strong, to keep up with our health practices and our faith practices so that we can finish this race strong. As we uh, go to God in prayer, I want to lift up our office manager, Ebony Harris. Uh, Ebony has gotten the flu. She says it's not COVID. She's been to the doctor. and um, uh, but There's uh, some other weird kind of flu. I shouldn't say weird, but um, virus going around. Some of you may know the folks that have it. So um, pray for Ebony and for her health and for her family as they are mourning uh, the loss of her brother and sister-in-law. And um, thank you to Jan for doing the bulletin and you'll see the rest of our prayer list there on, on the back. Let's have a moment of silence as we go to God and center ourselves and then I'll lead us in prayer and we'll end with the Lord's Prayer. Holy and gracious God, Mother, Father, Creator of us all, we come to you today and as always, uh, you know, our, our thoughts flip from one to another. Uh, the circumstances in our own lives, people that we love and are missing and grieving, people we're concerned about, and we lift them to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And God, you wake us up every morning and remind us that... Uh, We've got a brand new, beautiful day. And there's so many good things to be grateful for. We give you thanks. And sometimes, Lord, you know that we are the hardest on ourselves. We have expectations of ourselves that has nothing to do with what the world puts on us. Help us to realize that you created us and you love us and, and you call us to abide in you. That you are always working for good in the world. And that you have plans that we cannot know or see. They are deeper than we can even imagine. And you just allow us to be part of them. Thank you for sending your son Jesus to show us the way to live and to love. Thank you for sending the Savior. It's in his name that we pray together the prayer he, he taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now friends, as we share in Holy Communion, you should have received one of those little cups with the wafer on it. So I invite you just to, to get that ready. You don't have to open it yet. Um, but. You know, sometimes I just hear those little plastic things just ripping, ripping, ripping. So if it makes you feel better to open it, okay. <laughs> but uh, then let, let us be a people of prayer. I invite you to lift up your hearts. Give thanks to the Lord our God. Hear these words. Blessed are you, Lord our God, creator and sovereign of the universe. You love the world so much that you gave your only son, Jesus Christ, to be our savior. He suffered and died for the sins of the world. You raised him from the dead so that we too might have new life. He ascended to be with you in glory and according to his promise is with us always. So on the night before Jesus was crucified, he shared a last meal with his disciples. And he uh, took the bread that was lying there on the table, and he gave thanks to you. He broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the bread, or he took the cup, he gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we ask you to accept our sacrifice of praise and, and thanksgiving, which we offer in union with Christ's suffering for us as a living and holy surrender of ourselves. Send the power of your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts that in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of this cup, we may know the presence of the living Christ, be one body in him, cleansed by his blood, faithfully serve him in the world, and look forward to his coming and final victory. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. And with the confidence of the children of God, you uh, eat the bread that is given you. Let that wafer be a reminder of the holy bread of God.
and many of you have served as ushers, and uh, we often listen to beautiful music while somebody is uh, singing or playing, and, and it's a, a time in the worship when we are offering our gifts to God. Uh, so we've had to find new and different ways to do that, and I want to thank you all so much for your creativity, your constancy, your generosity in continuing to give. Many of you started uh, giving online. We do have baskets available to put offering in, uh, as, as always. Um, so this time is, is more of a recognition of, of God's generous nature to us and how we are created in God's image and called to be generous as well. I invite you to stand and let's uh, join in the doxology. It's number 94. <laughs>
People usually start gathering around 1130. There will be a lunch served. Debbie, lift a hand. Debbie is organizing that lunch. And other people have been calling and participating in that. So we do kind of need a head count. So um, I, I think your plans are coming together, right? Third and one. Okay, so we are looking forward to getting together. And if you haven't ever tried it, um, and you're available for lunch on Thursday, it's going to be a lot of fun and delicious food. So uh, just let them know if you can make it. Uh, and I'm so glad that we're doing this on Thursday. Um, the other thing that you may have noticed when you came in, I certainly want you to pick up a half-page flyer on your way out. This is not for you, though. This is for friends. Uh, we are planning a big barbecue lunch here in about three weeks, so we want to invite the preschool, we want you to invite your neighbors, maybe your co-workers, somebody that you've been praying about that needs to know the, the love and joy of being part of a church. So, uh, August the 22nd, here's your invitation to give to somebody else and invite them to church for our open house Sunday. We're just going to have worship and then the lunch. We're not going to have uh, uh, Sunday school on that day. So, things are happening at your church, and I'm so glad that you are here and that God is inspiring us to try some new things. Now, when you go out, you never know what's going to happen. God will surprise you as well. Rely on your faith training and be ready to share God's love. So, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.